guys, and welcome to number three. Three. And today we're going to talk about the fad diet concept, and we're going to put forward our first challenge. Now, our fad diet concept for me, well, the way what I refer to as fad diets, is basically something we jump onto um, to get a short term a short term time frame to try and change our whole life. Um, so think of it like the get rich quick scheme. You know, no one's ever really making money out of uh, selling soap and dishwashing powder and uh, and stuff like that. Fad diets are essentially the same thing. It's a get quick scheme designed to lure you into the emotional um, goal of uh, of losing weight and looking like the models in the pictures and all that. But what it essentially does is it makes you feel like crap. Your emotional state gets worse. You get depressed and you end up with more body weight than you started and an unhealthy amount of body fat that you didn't want to keep on. So fad diets come in all shapes and sizes um, and they're generally the ones that remove food groups or macros for no apparent reason other than trying to cut your calories down. So if we look at things like um, 12 week challenges and six week uh, body blitzes and stuff like that, they're generally a very, or a lot of bodybuilding coaches, it's a very, very basic diet of just blanched chicken and uh, a small amount of rice and copious amounts of kale and salad. This doesn't give the body long term enough of the nutrients it needs to survive and perform well. If we wanted to perform well and we wanted to push our body and keep our mental state nice and high, we need to eat lots of different colored foods and we need to consume fats and carbs and proteins. Um, and we want to do that in a nice, healthy, uh, considerate and moderate level. With fad diets, we don't necessarily get to do that. Uh, what they do is they starve us down to, um, to getting uh, into our body weight because we're worried about the scales and they disregard the catabolic effect on the body. It's very, very stressful for the body to try and do its job. Let me just see if I can turn that on. It's very, very stressful um, to do your to, for the body to do its job um, when it's in a uh, when it's in a starving state. All the processes that go on the body. And the number one re for girls, the number one um, uh, sign that uh, that um, that things are going off is our is our energy and our motivation and uh, and our drive and our enthusiasm and also our, our, our mental state. We can be generally um, very very uh, touchy uh, and stuff like that. Very very similar for guys, but we generally we we, we generally when we when we're run down, we generally shut down and just sort of sit still and don't do anything. We sort of hibernate. These are some of the signs that we're not fueling our body right. And this is a common feedback that we've seen in threads, the people who are doing these 12-week challenges. They're either overworked at the gym, they're underfed, and they're so tired and exhausted that they just lose their drive for everything. Now, the biggest challenge with these fat diets is, first, is, is one, is it doesn't teach you anything. It doesn't teach you how to fuel and feed yourself for the rest of your life. You can't live on these diets. You can't live on Jenny Craig, for example. We use Jenny Craig as an example. Um, this is a fad diet because people jump on Jenny Craig to drop that three to five kilos for spring and summer, um, and they do really, really well. An interesting fact about Jenny Craig is their return customer, uh, their return customers, is over sixty-five percent. So the people who are coming back to Jenny Craig this summer, sixty-five out of hundred of them would have already tried Jenny Craig in the past. Now that's not a good stat, like it's a good good return customers if you've got great products, but if you're in the weight loss industry, having return customers at that frequency means that there's something fundamentally wrong with how um, people are leaving those programs. So with, our, with, our, um, with, with something like Jenny Craig, you can't stay on that forever. You know, no one can really afford that. It's not, uh, it's not viable. Um, there's too much of life going on, but it works because people lose weight. But the other thing is that it doesn't teach you anything because you're not preparing your own foods, because you're not planning out your meal plan, um, because you're not putting that energy into understanding what you're doing for yourself. You don't learn and, and you, you can't create uh, anything from that. So when you stop using Jenny Craig, what your system or your understanding of nutrition of how you feed yourself falls back to the same process you're on before you started Jenny Craig. So you're on this challenging eating habit that's put you in a place where you're unhappy with your body weight and your health and fitness. So you jump on Jenny Craig for 12 weeks, you lose 8 to 10 kilos, then you jump off Jenny Craig, all happy, you lost 8 to 10 kilos. Your only option is to go back to what you know before you started Jenny Craig because you didn't learn anything on Jenny Craig um, because they prepare all the foods for you. So it's a bit of a challenge. Fad diets do exactly the same thing for us. We jump on them for such a small period that we don't really learn how to take care of ourselves. If we wanted to Let's say we wanted to be um, vegan. So vegan's a bit of a, a fad at the moment. Everybody wants to be meat-free and uh, plant-based and whatever they're calling themselves. But 
their understanding of nutrition is so poor at the start that what they're doing is they're not they're not in a healthy state already, and then they're removing a majority of their, their of their food because the TV told them so. So you're going to have all these people that are tired and lethargic and run down and exhausted, and their performance drops. Not because meat free is bad for the body; it's because they don't understand from a performance point for their body how much more fuel they have to put into their body to make up for what they're taking out. You can't simply just take a macronutrient out of your diet because the TV told you so and your body's just going to do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't fucking work like that. So if we're going to do fad diets, we need to understand and educate ourselves and realize what we're doing. I've used fad diets in the past. I've used diet dance and I like to cut body fat for, uh, for, different, uh, for different things. But outside of that, I'm not. I'm never in a position where I'm jumping onto a fad diet because I've let my overweightness go and I don't know how to fix it. So what we want to do with that, with with you guys, is make sure you know you know what to do. You all know how to do your job. You all know how to drive your car. You all know how to pay your bills. And that was you learned that growing up. What we want to do is make sure we learn how to eat. Uh, and learning how to eat is how we solve the body weight or body image issue because if we're fueled right and we're living our life happily then we get those results physically that we're after anyway. So fad diets in essence are a waste, okay? Don't jump on something because you want a short-term goal. If you want to be vegan or if you want to go paleo or if you want to go plant-based or anything like that, jump on it and put the time in it and study it like a degree so you know exactly what you're doing. You understand um, the process of what's going to do for your body, and you're you're aware enough to pay attention to the results, okay? Because if you if you go if you go meat free, for example, and you start getting weaker in the gym, and your your energy starts dying off because you're not getting enough iron, um, and in in your brain you start getting foggy brain because you're not getting enough fats in your diet. Um, you, if you unless you've got a direct correlation to your diet as being the cause of that, you might blame that on something else. And then you'll end up with like a, a can of V or a, a can of Coke or something like that, and you won't really re- relate that re- that uh, that result to the uh, process, the, the eating plan that you're on at the moment. So, all in for people who want to do eat however they like. It doesn't matter. Whatever whatever nutritional requirements you like, it's just like your sexuality. It's all yours. Go nuts. Um, just make sure it's working well for you. And you're getting the fuel and you're feeling great all the time. Okay, so we don't do fad diets. Now, fad supplements. Fad supplements. Basically, probably 95% of the stuff in a supplement shop is a fad supplement. Um, anything that is growth, uh, anything that says women's only protein uh, is a fad. There's no such thing. Women's protein and men's protein are exactly the same. Now, fad supplements are the ones that are supposed to turn you into, the ones that basically that turn you into a superhuman. Ones that you know change your DNA, ones that increase muscles, masses, you know, ten thousand times more results with taking this supplement uh, and things like that. Uh, most of those ones that uh, and, and fat loss supplements, fat loss supplements are the ones that are big waste. Anything that says fat loss or burns more fat or um, or you know tortures fat while you're sleeping all that is a load of crap. It, the easiest way to understand that is the the metabolic process is like a furnace and it requires a lot of things to get that furnace working. Okay, you can't just you can't just go and um, you can't just go and take a tablet and then all of a sudden all those ingredients start working in your, in your furnace. Okay, you need to be doing the work and you need to be fueling yourself right. Those weight loss supplements they might assist in terms of putting a few little herbs in your body, but it's certainly not um, going to give you the result that's worth the investment. Okay, if you wanted to spend seventy dollars or one hundred fifty dollars a month on fat loss supplements, okay, you got to qualify that and say how much results am I going to get? And the easiest way to understand whether those drugs are effective or not is just take the drugs without doing anything and see what happens. If this, if their fat loss supplement is supposed to torch body fat while you sleep, why do we need to go to the gym? Why do we need to eat healthy? Okay, those supplements are just there to take more money out and try and keep you more accountable, if anything, because you've invested more money into your journey. So weight loss supplements and stuff like that, we don't uh, we don't worry about stuff like that. Things like Oxy Shred, um, stuff like that. It's just it is just a waste of money, and it's going to poison your body as well because it's got a lot more chemicals in there that your body needs and that it can do anything with. If you're exercising right and your nutrition's on point, you don't need any of that stuff. Now, the caveat to that is that there are some supplements that are obviously good for you. Multivitamins, zinc, magnesium, uh, iron, you know, ones that uh, minerals and vitamins the body actually uses. Those ones in the correct dose are, are perfect, okay? We should all have you taking a good quality multivitamin. 
uh, because it's going to help us make us feel better. It's going to give the body a few more ingredients. Uh, zinc and magnesium helps the muscle re recover. Caffeine helps us stay stimulated and alert during our workouts. Um, so those type of supplements are perfect, okay? Uh, and, then, and they don't need to be taken in huge amounts and stuff like that. They can just be added onto what you're doing. And they're going to support your journey. But things like fat burners and women's only protein and lipo rush and shit like that, don't waste your money on them because you're just going to end up going getting broke. Um, so fad diets and fad supplements. The general rule of thumb is that you have to be able to do it long term. Okay. So if you're going to jump on a diet plan, okay, can you do this diet plan for the rest of your life? And if you can't, why are you doing it for a short period? So if you've got it, like for, for me, uh, let's just say I've, I've, got, I've got a competition coming up and I need to drop two kilos, I don't mind jumping on a fad diet for 21 days to so drop that two kilos, okay, because I know that I've, it's only because I'm a little bit outside my window of where I need to be. Uh, and that, that works, that, 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 and that's completely normal. But if you're jumping on a fad diet because uh, it's summer coming up and I want to look ship shape for summer, then that's okay as well. But when you finish that diet and you get yourself ship shape, you need to have a plan after that to continue that journey along. Don't just do it, get ship shape, and then fuck it off, and then go back to your old eating plans, okay? Because you're just going to wake up tired and sore, and by the end of summer, you're going to be really upset with yourself. Um, fad supplements are exactly the same. Okay, you can't take those oxy shreds for the rest of your life. You can't take those massive fat burners, those massive muscle gains, those test boosters, those uh, estrogen blockers, the cortisol blockers, all that type of junk that's out there. They're not long-term solutions. And for most of us, what we need to be looking at is is future future placing ourselves. So don't do fat diets and spend a heap of time learning about your nutrition, understanding how, and this is what we spoke about last week, was how do you feel during training? Are you getting your pre-work, pre-training meal in? If you are, did you have a good training session? If you missed your pre-training meal and you have a crappy session, relate that back to the meal so you start learning, you start understanding and appreciating it. All right, so let's go on to this week's challenge. Now, this is the first week. Now, last week I gave you some challenge and, uh, and the result was a little bit mixed, but this week what I want to do is we want to focus on having one 24-hour period of 100% perfect uh, adherence to our nutrition and training. So that means that for, let's say, um, that's, so today's, uh, today's Wednesday, um, if you get uh, Friday is your goal, I want 100% focus on my nutrition on Friday. That means on Thursday night, I'm preparing all my meals. I've got my breakfast ready, I've got my two snacks, I've got my three meals ready to go, and my water bottle, okay? Then I'll just, for one day, everything right. Okay, what, you, what we'll do from that is we'll either figure out what we want to do is, and if we're doing everything right, we're going to make sure our macro count is right. So if your if your required macro count is twenty two hundred calories for the day, you're going to make sure that on Friday you consume twenty two hundred calories with forty percent of that being protein, thirty carbs, and thirty fat, or whatever protocol you're following. Okay, so it's one hundred percent perfect, all of the calories, all of the meals, no excuses. Now this also includes our water. Okay, this includes also getting our timings down as well. So if we're training Friday night, we know we've got to eat two hours before training. So what I do is if I know, if I know that I'm training in the afternoon, I generally eat a little bit lighter. So I might have um, chicken and salad for, uh, for morning tea. Um, and then I might have uh, some tuna and a bread roll for, for, for lunch. And then at about 2 o'clock, I might have my um, beef and rice. Okay, a nice high carb meal. Uh, low GI carbs go in there. Um, and then I'm hitting the gym by 6 Okay, so I know that when I'm training, whatever time I'm training at, I move the, car, the, the heavy meals around those sessions. So you need to do the same thing as well. Your one day, that's perfect, okay, all your macros, right to the count, uh, doing all the right stuff um, for one day. And what we want to do is try and improve on that. We're going to use our first day as our learning curve to make sure, first, you know you're eating the right amount of calories per day. If you focus on just one day, you'll be able to learn that if you're under eating and you have to make up an extra six, 700 calories, you get a whole extra meal, how that works across the whole day. If you're eating a your whole meals, all of your meals all day, you're going to be full. You're probably not going to be able to get most of those meals in if you're under eating at the moment. And you're going to be able to see how much of that fuel you're leaving behind. If you leave the equivalent of a whole meal behind at the end of the day because you're full and you can't eat, then, then that means you're under eating at such a state that your stomach is starting to shrink. It's not used to having that much volume of food in there. So you're going to have to start getting that volume of food into your day until, it gets, until your body gets used to it. Okay, uh, these are really important learning curves for you guys because as we move forward, what you look like and how you feel and your performance in June next year, 
will come down to today. And I tell all my athletes that competitions are won in the off season. Okay, the work we put in in the off season in training before we step up on the stage is whether we're going to win or not. So whether you guys want to excel at your performance, excel at your body weight, excel at your goals, it comes down to the work you do today, and that will show up next week and the week after and the week after than that. Um, all right, so your challenge for this week. One day, 100% adherence to your meal plan, okay? And we want to make sure that uh, water, meal prep, right amount of macros, right meal timings, okay, are sorted out for that entire day, okay? Awesome. All right, make sure you guys get me some comments. I love to have feedback. I love to talk. I love to communicate. I want to be able to help you guys out as much as we can. Watch this video. Send me some love back, and we'll uh, make some magic.